is the confirmation, is the making the conjecture more and more plausible. So that's the other obvious use of computers to refute conjectures and to confirm the failure to refute it, even though you try many, many cases, is heuristic confirmation of conjecture. Did Alisco have, he was able to, in all cases, he proved the real part was a half or just really, really close? No, no, no. Uh, it's, yes. a, it's, it's an exact algorithm. So he had a theorem to the first 10 billion. It's true, exactly. Because it's a theorem, if it's close enough, then it's exactly. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. But what I'm interested in is a more creative use of computers to prove, actually prove theorems and conjecture, not just to refuse them. So the whole is the whole subject of automatic theorem proving, which I think is very interesting, but I'm not that keen on because it tries to mimic the Euclidean approach. It tries to do what the mathematician was supposed to do. So if you teach a computer axioms, and you teach a computer the laws of logic, and how to deduce them. So then computers are very fast, so you take the axioms, axiom one, axiom two, axiom three, and step by step, you try to build theorems. And if you go far enough, you hope to get something interesting. Of course, there are lots of theorems. Most of them are very boring. So you need a human being or a computer that has some aesthetic criterion to find out what's interesting. So this is a, an approach. But I think that this approach is limited. Because this takes exponential time. There are exponentially many, many theorems. And to get to interesting theorems, even computers cannot do it. The myth is the computers are very, very fast. Yes, that's, that's wrong. Computers are much, 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 much faster than we humans. But they're still extremely slow. The only several orders of magnitude faster than we humans. And eventually, we get the exponential blow up. So just generating theorems from the axioms will not get you very far. And the axiomatic method is not really a good one. In fact, Kurt Gödel and Alan Turing already metaproved that the axiomatic Method is bankrupt. As you probably know, David Hilbert had a dream. Of course, he was not comfortable with all the paradoxes of infinity. So he had a dream that even though you can talk about infinity, everything can be reduced to a collection of axioms and every statement can be proven or unprovable. Proven. We must know, we will know. That was his motto. So David Hilbert, it turned out, was very naive. And then came Kurt Gödel, and later on Alan Turing, and meta-proved that there exists True, yet unprovable statement. In other words, the proof methodology has its limitations. Every statement is either provable, or its negation is provable, or the third alternative is called assault. And this is true, not just for and some of them, for many, many of them, for most of them, neither provable nor unprovable. Yeah, but you have to be a little more specific, so let, let's 
that's an oxymoron what you're saying. Yes. We have to be within. We have to say within the system yeah. of axioms uh, yes. under these and these conditions. Blah blah blah. I agree. In fact, I agree even more. I, I my statement about this is even stronger ah. with what you believe, and you probably would disagree with my interpretation of Godel's. I think Godel's is theorem is the most misunderstood statement in the whole of mathematics. By hindsight, it's obvious. And it should have been obvious all the way. In the old days, people believed that in every statement it is either true or false. But then, some guy called Perimenides or a Cretan and said, all Cretans are liars. So the following sentence, this sentence is false. True or false? Is this sentence? <laughs> it's neither true nor false. It's neither. It's indeterminate or meaningless. So it's not a dichotomy, true or false. It's a trichotomy. True, false, or meaningless. Uh, Michael, uh, is it true or false? Did you quit, quit smoking? True or false? Did you quit smoking? Uh, it's false because I've never smoked. No! <laughs> if, if it's false, then you used to smoke and you quit. So, <laughs> well, did you stop beating up your wife? <laughs> true or false? <laughs> so most statements are neither true nor false, they are meaningless. And what did Gödel do? He took a takeoff from this statement, this sentence is false. He constructed a mathematical statement, this sentence is unprovable. And this sentence, this sentence is unprovable, must be true. Support by contradiction, it would have been provable. And it would have been wrong. If the, if the sentence, quote, this sentence is approvable, is wrong, it means this sentence is provable. But if something is provable, hopefully it's correct. So this sentence is correct. So this sentence is unprovable, contradiction. So God has said, there's an example of a, of a sentence. It's true, but approvable. Of course. This is very nice, but this is English. And in English we know uh, it's very fuzzy. But what's nice about Gödel, he constructed a number of theoretical statements. A concrete number of theoretical statements that is equivalent to this. He had some coding of the axioms into prime numbers, and he coded the laws of logic into arithmetical operations, and every purported proof corresponds to a certain statement in number theory. So this sentence in approval is equivalent to something like this. For every... Mm. So according to Gödel, he found this Gödel sentence uh, that is equivalent to, logically to this, is an example of a true yet unprovable. This is complete garbage. No offense to Gödel. And some very smart people, uh, like Sir Roger Penrose, built the whole philosophy of human superiority. The computers 